trip. I mean, they, they continue the growth, they 20% revenue growth beating on the top and bottom line. Outlook was a little bit worse than expected and some below the line items to quibble with. How do you see the quarter? Well, we're not surprised by the top line revenue number as the number one line item on my family's uh, credit card this holiday season that we certainly did our part. Um, I understand, you know, AWS came in a little bit light on margins, but we're not going to complain about a business that's growing 45% year over year. Their advertising business, we think, is very similar to AWS as far as the long-term opportunity there and the margins that they could produce. I heard some complaints earlier that they only grew 95%. Um, we'll take that every day. So we see a lot of opportunity here um, in the pipeline that's on top of their e-commerce business that's now becoming more diversified uh, because of third parties becoming over 50% of their revenue stream there, and that's higher margin business. We also think they've got a tremendous opportunity in artificial intelligence that's not talked about enough. And we think that that parallels with their AWS business and can be a, a very significant profit driver for many, many years to come. And we should note 12% of your portfolio is Amazon. So you're a big shareholder. Yes. We're glad to have Priya, you at, at that level. <laughs> Priya, was 95% growth in advertising enough? It's a lot. It's a little bit slower than the triple digit growth we've been seeing in the last couple of quarters. But like Tripp said, 95 percent growth is nothing to scoff at. Clearly, Amazon's able to take that really large base it has of third party merchants and offer those people different ad products and say, you want more sales on Amazon? You want more visibility for your products? Go with this option and advertise more through Amazon. And from the merchants I've spoken with in my reporting, people are glad to at least have that option to be able to pay to get their products surfaced higher. So the marketplace essentially is feeding upon that. Mike, when we consider the guidance, uh, is there fear that uh, this strong holiday quarter we see it saw won't be repeated, not least uh, in Q1 uh, with, the, with the government shutdown? You know, I, I think the quarter ticked a lot of boxes, and especially for growth, I actually thought the guidance was was fine, um, both on the top line and uh, specifically for, for margins. I think, you know, Amazon is really delivering on a North American e-commerce business that's got decent profit margins very consistently for one of the first times in the last decade or so. Um, you know, I think the key thing that investors look for in Amazon stock is uh, steady, consistent growth that is highly predictable. And um, Amazon is very much delivering on that. You look at the, kind of the major uh, big picture items, which is that, you know, e-commerce is still only a small portion of retail and Amazon is still only a small portion of e-commerce. And that gives um, investors a lot of confidence that the growth here, you know, which is sort of settling in at 20 percent or so, that the growth here can, can stay in this range for, for quite some time. Trip, a uh, little bit light relative to expectations on the subscriber um, revenue. Is there something that you should be concerned about in terms of the maturity of, of Prime or anything like that? Well, I think they've obviously, you know, said there are over 100 million subscribers in the U.S. Um, when you look at growing, grow, growing in that area, they've got to expand internationally. That's been the challenge. There's obviously a lot of opportunity and current challenges in India. Um, we've seen a lot of focus on the Middle East as well. So I think the way to get that number up and get that line item up is international growth for them in the coming quarters and coming years. Priya, what, what are you going to be listening for on the call? Well, it's important to hear what Brian Olsofsky says about Amazon's growth in India and how new e-commerce regulations might affect that. They've invested, committed to investing billions of dollars in India, and it's arguably their most international market right now to be watching uh, because of the competition they have there with Flipkart and owned by Walmart as well. So hearing what Brian says about the recent regulations that have become clearer and create a much more challenging business environment for U.S.-based companies operating there, it'll be important to hear how Amazon's planning to address that and what they can do going forward to make sure they can, you know, the money that they're investing there isn't just translating to losses. Michael, sum it up for us. Uh, what's your price recommendation, uh, and you're altering that at all today? Well, um, our last published price target's uh, 2250. Uh, we'll have to dive into the numbers and, and see how we feel about that going forward. Um, you know, I definitely think after the guy, you know, the reason why the stock was down after Q3 earnings was the revenue guidance at that time was a little bit weaker than people were looking for. Uh, the stock's recovered now quite a bit since that since that time. I think this quarter is a very good sort of uh, confidence building quarter that should help investors, you know, sort of look to the future, forget about that Q3 print 
and I think it's you know setting Amazon up to have a pretty good year in 2019.